Okay, today is the second part of uh, the parametricism of Patrick Schumacher. Uh, the last time, last class, I showed this quote by uh, Mario Carpo. Uh, so he uh, emphasized the architects should uh, run. Uh, we have to accept we we shouldn't, you know, hesitate to accept uh, technological innovation. And also, architecture is always has been uh, at the forefront of uh, all the innovations in technology. So, this guy is very uh, relevant to this quote, I think. So, he uh, uh, claimed the styles are design research programs. I think it's uh, it can resemble this uh, the phrase uh, with a famous, who is that guy, Miss Van der Rohe, form follows functions and, um, and the road eventually, uh, he reinterpret that one too. But that, this is the, his manifesto, styles of design research programs. So it's very different from the conventional architects. So he, uh, uh, he insisted, you know, uh, the studying and the studies and the research of architecture, technology, not only technology, but also uh, all the innovations that is very important to generate the new type of styles, architecture styles. So today I'm going to talk about, I mean, today's lecture is consists of three parts. The first one is uh, I will talk about the brief history of uh, digital, you know, digitalization in architecture from early 19th century to uh, current stage, especially by articles so of Eisenman and Charles Jenks and Schaffer Pasquarelli. It's hard to pronounce his name. He's the, uh, he's a famous guy. He's also a famous historian. Do you know this guy, Charles Sings? He's a uh, he's British uh, historian. Uh, he's the first guy uh, kind of to make the definition of postmodernism. And this, he's the, uh, the princi principal of shop architects in America, in the United States. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to briefly introduce the, his office too. And secondly, Parametricism, not, not, of, not only about Zaha's work, but also uh, today's tendency and also recent work. Very sh uh, shortly, briefly, just images. So this is the, uh, the writings of uh, Eisenman. So he said, uh, there was a paradigm shift after World War II from the mechanical paradigm to electrical, uh, me mechanical ones from electrical ones. So the uh, example was the, the perspective. Oh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the other perspective again. So uh, the electronic paradigm directs a powerful challenge to architecture because it defines reality in terms of media and simulation. It values appearance over existence. That means. Uh, the before 19th century, 80 centuries, uh, is com computer and computations, and it's not very uh, uh, pervasive. It's not uh, it's not very uh, using that machines are not very popular, uh, and also you know starting use the AutoCAD. In the architectural field is the late 80 centuries, late 80 centuries, uh, late 80s and early 90s in Korea, mid 90s. So it's kind of uh, it's not very uh, long time ago. I think it's only 20 years ago, right? 20, 30, 20, 30 years ago. But that kind of uh, using machines and it changed a lot. Before that. No, the computers and the medias, uh, architects. They uh, the the you know the process of architectural design is the same as the very traditional thing. You know, using hands. You know, the making drawing by hands, and 
So the perspectives and and you know the perspe one point perspective, two point perspectives, and plans and sections. I think it's all same as the you know, 500 years ago. This way, it's all same. But uh, before 30 years ago, uh, in virtual computers, in virtual media's digital technology, uh, the way of design is uh, has been totally changed. So he said that that shift is that is uh, from the mechanical paradigm uh, to elect electronic paradigm. The mechani here mechanical means it's not only about machines. Mechanical means uh, you know using hands is the same as mechanical way too. But uh, 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 in a way of thinking, it's not you know it's not about the tool. It's a way of thinking is the mechanical, and now is more like the you know electronic electronic and computational, computational. So I'm gonna talk about the, what's the meaning of mechanical paradigm uh, he, uh, by uh, the Hira Eisenman's quote. So he said here in the 15th century architects, architecture has been dominated by mechanics of vision. Mechanics of vision is a perspective, the one point perspective, right? This is very, uh, uh, you know, before you know, invention of uh, the perspectives, there is no. I mean, it's like, you know, I think at the, you know, 14th centuries, 15th centuries, I think it draw, uh, artists, painters, and and also architects, they try to uh, analyze the you know the kind of vision. So they they try to uh, draw the vision in, on the paper. Exactly the same way. So Brunelleschi, you know the Brunelleschi, right? He's the Italian architect and the painter. He invented one-point perspective. So that's the big change. So after invention of uh, uh, the Brunelleschi's one-point perspectives, everything has followed his way, the kind of mechanical way uh, of drawings. So Peter Eisenman keep going on. The Brunelleschi's projection system confirmed vision as dominant discourse in architecture uh, from 16th century to the present. I think that's totally true, right? So when I when I was uh, when I was your age, you know, I uh, I did an internship uh, in the small office. Uh, they actually they used, I think it was the 2000. I guess. Yeah, the architects, they are using the computer, but uh, way of thinking is very uh, mechanical. This way of thinking is totally analog. And also, the computer rendering at the time in Korea is not very uh, popular. So, you know, hand drawer, hand, hand, hand drawing renderer, uh, they are still doing their own jobs. To you know, to make the perspective for the competition panels or you know clients' presentations, so it's kind of a hybrid. Because my younger generation, I uh, I was hired because I can use computer, I can use three D programs, so I can generate you know digital uh, renderings. Uh, that's why I, I was hired. But uh, except for me, so most of uh, designers, most of architect architects in that firm, they cannot use the three D. Uh, tools. So I think that I'm the in Korea. I was the first generation, you know, about the, you know, digital uh, using the digital process in architecture. Yes, and you guys are the same way. So it's not a Br Brunelleschi's drawing. Uh, it's someone else, <coughs> where he drew the the Brunelleschi's. The, Duomo in Trece is a one-point perspective. But it's, uh, you know, I cannot find any difference between this drawing and uh, today's uh, one-point perspective. Not not today's, but uh, you know, the days when I was the you know, college student. So almost like 500 years, is a, you know the way of drawing is uh, always it has been the same. And uh, the Piranesi, you know Piranesi, right? The 
if you honestly, he's a famous architect, uh, the painter and architect. He's, yeah, he was an architect too. So he was very uh, famous uh, in using the one point perspective and his own very characteristic drawings. <coughs> and the uh, early 19th century is the philosopher, like, you know, the, the constructivism philosopher like Deleuze, he was the, uh, say architect, you know, arch deconstructivism architect, uh, they always make examples, uh, I always make example by uh, Deleuze because they, uh, uh, they try to people appreciate, you know, the, this deconstructivism, deconstructivist architect, architecture is not uh, intuitistic, it's, it's like the uh, it has a kind of philosophic meaning. So, uh, the constructivist like Peter Eisenman and as many architects uh, also, who is that guy? The winners of uh, La Villette. Uh, yeah, that kind of guys, or, I mean, they, they like the less because he has an idea of a kind of a the space and uh, the different idea of a space. So he defines a new relationship between vertical and horizontal. You know, the, the traditional meaning of the space is uh, it has a four walls, right? And then two surfaces on the, in the, on the top and below. So it has a six surface. So that is the, the definition of a space. But Deleuze, he said, I mean, let's go to the, so he uh, proposed the idea of fold, so that fold presents the possibility and architecture alternative of the you know, gridded space of Cartesian order. So the folding, you know, the making the, the angled wall, I mean, you can kind of experience, the, uh, you can have the different experience, different, you know, sp spatial uh, experience. That's the kind of definition of a fold by Deleuze. I'm, I'm not good at the philosophy, so I'm just, uh, I just use the quote of Peter Eisenman. I don't like the philosophy in architecture too. And yeah, so this is a rust uh, phrase. Architecture will continue to stand up to deal with the gravity uh, to be forwards. You know, that's the traditional meaning of the space. But these forwards <coughs> no, no, no longer need to be expressive of the mechanical paradigm mechanical paradigm with way of uh, Vitruvius, uh, Brunelleschi, not Vitruvius, Brunelleschi. The latter, they could deal with the possibility of these order, other discourses, the other affective sense, those sound, and that means, you know, uh, because the one point perspective, <coughs> one point perspective, it's, 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 it's difficult to uh, explain by English. Uh, you know, to make the one point perspective, right angle is, is the mo more, you know, using right angle is the, is more efficient, right? Uh, once you start to use the angled wall, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna make the, your perspective, the making perspective really difficult. Uh, so that's the way, I mean, that's the, uh, the claim of Peter Eisenman. So mechanical paradigm that, that kind of dominate the design of the space. So he said, I mean, it's the folding, right? It's a folding words. So this is kind of a traditional meaning of design. And then he uh, kind of manipulate, uh, articulate uh, these this ones by using the fold. <coughs> I mean, before, you know, the, the generation of the computer, Peter Eisenman's way is, is, is different from this. He, uh, he, he made a different, I mean, he always tried to make the different, uh, the possibility, alternatives of a grid, but uh, this one is more radical than that because it can use the computer from this time. I think it's the, he, uh, he got this commission, uh, 80, 88, 91, <coughs> this one in Japan. <coughs> this one is a one point perspective, it's a two point perspective. Yeah, two point pers perspective, but actually it doesn't look like a traditional meaning of a two point perspective, right? It's, too, it's very oblique. So 
this project uh, can be example of this, uh, this article. Uh, and then this one is the <coughs> written by uh, Charles Jenks in 1997, so after five, uh, five years after Peter Eisenman's uh, writing. <coughs> so he said, what are the recent examples of a new paradigm? I mean, he said, uh, Peter Eisenman said the new paradigm is uh, uh, the media. Electronic, electronic is ele using the electronic tools. This the new paradigm. So he he says similar thing. But it's a little bit different because after five years, the form of the building, I mean, the technology is more developed. So uh, you can even make the curved wall. Uh, not only you know the angled wall, sloped wall, but also in you know, a curved wall, the two-way curvature, only five in five years. So he said, uh, the Frank Eris Guggenheim and Peter Eisenman's uh, Ar 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 Aronoff Center, yeah, Aronoff Center and Libeskind Jewish extension is very important. But to me, I mean, this too is the is a remnant of postmodernism, I think. The, but uh, uh, the Frank Gehry, he's a kind of deal breaker. He's a pioneer of uh, new architecture, I think. So the uh, non-linear, the building, is the paradigm, is a new paradigm. That's the, uh, the claim of uh, Charles Jenks. So he said, uh, new science is a new language. It's a, language means the formal language, architectural language, and it's a new metaphor. It's all about the form. So new science, by, by in virtue of new science, you can make the new, uh, new trend, the new style in architecture. So this is the, the Peter Eisenman's, uh, actually, this is the architecture school of the University of Cincinnati. It's built, designed in 1988, and probably built in the mid 90s. But it's not a, I mean, he said, uh, I mean, this building is a non-linear non-linear architecture, but actually it's linear, right? It has some different angles, but like basically it's a very linear building. I don't know, I don't like this one, it's very ugly. And this one is, it's, it's also linear, it's very linear buildings. So I think it's, it's very stylish. It's not about, it's, it's not, it doesn't actually make the, it's a new paradigm. It's basically the same as the, uh, the conventional, you know, it's kind of a different version of a modern, modernism building. It's a different style, but basically it's not a new, new one. It's not, I mean, in terms of a technology, in terms of construction technology, it's basically the same as the modern, modernism building. This one too. But that is different. I mean, this one is, uh, I went there six, six or seven years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a super famous building. The Bilbao used to be an in industrial city, and then it's kind of a, you know, the Spain, and also uh, the area of name is Basque, 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 Basque. This area, uh, economy of this area is uh, declining. Uh, they have a lot of uh, <coughs> the ship uh, factories, but, but uh, you know, the Korea and also Japan, um, they kind of the uprising in the ship making the industry, so they lost their market. So the Bilbao was kind of, a, it, it is becoming the dying city. But uh, I mean, and then they, uh, ask Frank Gehry and Guggenheim uh, a foundation to make the new uh, building. So they spent all the money they have in this city and it was very successful. But uh, I mean, I mean, it's very, uh, I think it still looks like uh, from the you know, outside, from the distance, it looks like the DDP, but actually basically it's totally different from DDP. The, all the panel of DDP is all different, right? It's uh, so factory made, it's digitally fabricated. But it's the you know site made you know the curvature, right? So it's a different way. It's, it's a very uh, the co combination between analog and analog 
and digital ways. So I think it's the, I see it's great building, uh, but it's still not enough uh, in terms of using the digital technology and digital fabrication. The interior, uh, I mean, you can make that. It's not, without using computer, I mean, you can make this, but you need a lot of money, but in, at least you can make this. It's not very special. This tower is a little bit special because the, you know, I went there and uh, I carefully watched these old stones, but it has a uh, shallow, shallow the curvature. So I was curious how do they cut these stones. But I think it's by machine, I guess. But that is the, the only, uh, only thing, you know, they use kind of computer uh, technology, uh, fabrication technology. It's great building. And then this one is article by uh, the Pasquarelli in Sharp Architects. I'm going to introduce Sharp Architects. So he says, second generation of these architects and um, theorists are emerging who have placed emphasis on open models of practice. I mean, let me just uh, explain this by myself. I think the early 20th centuries, the school and students and many young architects, they, they generate a lot of the form making in you know, architecture. But after five years, after some years, they realize it's, it's impossible to realize that because it's only, they didn't think about the way of the construction. So in the early 21 first centuries, the architects, the young architects, they start to think about you know, how, to, how to construct it, how to construct kind of a interesting you know, the shapes, stylish shapes. So they uh, defines, that's the versioning, you know. So you, you made the form first in 3D tools, and then you need to have the, some versioning to, you know, uh, to version uh, that forms uh, in order to, uh, for the construction. So before that time, I mean, he's a unique, I mean, he's a super famous architect, so, you know, People, you know, they, they spend money, but uh, to young architects, to, you know, not famous architects, clients, they're not gonna spend money, so they have to think about how to construct you know, their interesting forms. So the versioning is, there is an interesting quote. The versioning implies the shift of design away from system of horizontal uh, integration. Horizontal integration means it's traditional meaning of design. Designers, as simply the generator of representation form is designer is just a form maker. So not gonna think about the construction. But uh, we have to think about, we have to have a system of vertical integration. Vertical integration means we have to also think about the construction at the same time too. So, you know, architects, uh, we have to think about not only, you know, just only design, but also we have to think about, we have to propose the way of construction, how to construct that. So, <coughs> The shop architect, uh, this is their uh, the very first project. Uh, so winning proposal of uh, MoMA Museum of Modern Art, PS1. I mean, it's very ugly. I think it's very ugly, but I, it was very sensational because all the pieces of this wooden you know, element is generated by computers. Is it, I don't think it's generated by computer, but they uh, insisted that it's generated by computer. It's very ugly, but it is super famous. They, it, this project made them very famous. And then now after 10 years, they're doing this kind of building, big buildings. Yeah, it's all, yeah, I think it's the similar way of uh, uh, DDP, but DDP is more, uh, uh, more radical. It's, it's, not, it's not two way curvature, it's one way curvature. I mean, only limited, Area they used uh, two-way curvature, but not as complicated as the DDP. It's one A, it's linear. Uh, it's kind of two-way curvature, but uh, simple. <coughs> so it's not very difficult in this uh, this time. But you need this. But you still need to have a lot of money. But you know, 15 years ago they do this kind of thing, but now they do skyscrapers. They became the very successful architect in my opinion. Probably the most successful architect. 
in America, I think, these days. And the first is the example of versioning. Um, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, architect and young architect and students, they only generate this form, but they have no idea how to construct that. But at these days, you have to, you have to, you know, to provide a uh, solution of a construction. So it's the uh, uh, CNC cut uh, the pieces after aggregation. <coughs> you can generate this form. So, so let's go to the parametricity. Uh, developed over the past 15 years. So past 15 years, you know, the Eisenman also talk about kind of a meaning of uh, importance of electronic thing. And those Charles Jenks uh, also uh, defines a new paradigm of architecture is a nonlinear architecture. Nonlinear architecture, you can generate that kind of thing by computer. And also, you know, sharp architects, they, uh, they also, they are also a good example of a kind of a, uh, a digital generation of architect, architect, architecture. And so it became the uh, most important style. So he said, uh, developed over the past 15 years, uh, now claim on, claiming the hegemony within avant-garde architecture practice, uh, it succeeds modernism. So parametricism and computer, com computer digitalization of architecture, it succeeds mod modernism. Uh, as the next wrong way of a systematic innovation. I think it's kind of a, uh, kind of right, but uh, not parametricism, but a dis digital architecture. I think it succeeds, it can succeed modernism in the future, but not now, I think. But parametricism finally brings to the end of a tra transitional phase of uncertainty uncertainty uh, endangered by the crisis of modernism and mark by a series of uh, relatively short-lived activity. Okay, so anyway, so, so he uh, is claiming the parametricism is a success at the modernism, not, in not only in architecture as well, I mean, not, in, not only in architecture, but also industrial design things, this kind of uh, chairs uh, designed by uh, uh, Ross. Love Club Studio. So this kind of pattern is made by, uh, I mean, the design of this chair is, I mean, it's very different from you know, modern style, right? I'm not sure that is comfortable, comfortable but uh, it looks very unique. <coughs> and also they use the glass, glass offer to design these kind of patterns. So this is for the car design. I think it's not for real car, it's, uh, it's for concept car, but anyway. It's getting more, you know, realistic now. <coughs> Shoes, but uh, it's, it's, I mean, this kind of thing is not very, it's not very architecture, it's only pattern, right? It's not, I mean, structure is, is not related to the, any parametric things. It's only patterns. This is pattern two. This is pattern two, it's, it's, it's very stylish. But uh, the Zaha, uh, Zaha Hadid architects, they uh, proposed a new chair. Um, so this is the kind of analysis of a structural forces. So they uh, just represent that forces uh, as aesthetics. So this is 3D printed chairs by using the two different materials. One is uh, transparent, another is opaque. So they made that uh, 2014. Yeah, two years ago. So 3D printing, I think it's also very uh, influential device uh, for the change of architecture too. So I showed this one. So negative, negative things of parametricism is uh, avoid, I mean, I saw the avoid familiar typology. This is familiar <laughs> typology and avoid platonic and Platonic object, avoid clear cut zones. I always said, I mean, this is clear cut, this is clear cut. This is all modern style things. And avoid repetition, avoid repetition, this is all repetition, right? It's all modern modernism. I mean, before modernism, actually, uh, 
Yeah, so we use the repetition, but not as much as the modern, modern architects. And, and avoid right angles, avoid corners, yeah. But he said the positive things in parametricism is, yeah, all cool vocabularies. <coughs> so he said it's not the parametricism, it's not like very, uh, uh, emerging thing is already mature. It's very mature style because we uh, talk about this kind of continuous differentiation for 50, more than 15 years. Versioning, I talk about the versioning and iterations and mass customization and this kind of thing for a long time. So we are ready to accept the parametricism. Anyway, so yeah, we, I think architects and people, we have a, uh, I mean, if you look at the history of architecture, there is two, I mean, if I simplify that history, uh, there is a two ways in architecture. One is mainstream. Mainstream is uh, you know, Romanesque, Baroque, you know, that kind of thing. Another way is uh, avant-garde. He's some kind of, a, you know, mannerism architect, architecture and write Gaudi, you know, architects write Gaudi and try Otto. So strange architect, architecture, strange design. But uh, uh, I mean, sometimes people like the mainstream, sometimes like the avant-garde. So it's always, uh, uh, it has been, it has gone to, you know, uh, has gone together in the history of architecture. So, <coughs> So the modern style, modernism in architecture is kind of mainstream architecture. It's still prevailing now, but uh, parametricism, I think, is kind of a, I mean, I don't think that can be the mainstream, but right? it's, it's the uh, avant-garde architecture, but, you know, avant-garde architecture is also important. It has, has to, uh, it has done the important role in architectural history too. Um, so this is the, this is not avant-garde. This is, uh, this is kind of avant-garde, but this is not, it's very uh, unique. So do you know this building? This famous building by uh, Felix Candela. Uh, the thin, you know, uh, the vault. So he uh, made this, uh, the vault. So it's, I mean, actually the Gaudi used the, uh, he, he actually he used a similar geometric system, uh, which is uh, uh, I forgot that hyper hyper hyperboloid hyperboloid. So by using the, this linear you know elements, so you can make the two-way curvature. That's the logic of making this one. So it's an analog way uh, to make the two-way two-way curvature. So people always try to make kind of an interesting geometry. So two-way curvature is one of them. So the Gaudi, maybe not by Gaudi, but some other guy, uh, some one guy, uh, he invented a way of uh, you know making the two-way curvature by using the you know, linear elements. So he, so Felix Candela, he uh, kind of uh, developed the way of Gaudi uh, to make the, his own aesthetics. But it's all same, right? It's all same. It's a uh, repetition of uh, the same vault. But these days, uh, the, by using the computer, you can make the, this kind of a, uh, it, it can be built. I mean, they probably, they uh, it, this building is on the construction. I mean, it's almost, I think it's done, I guess. So it's not, Reparative, it's all different, you know, shape. I mean, they also provide a kind of technology how to make that, uh, not by labor, but a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, it's not very uh, digital things, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the by using cables, uh, so they uh, invented the easier way to generate this kind of two-way curvature, but that also has environmental function too. So it's not only more, not only about aesthetics, but also it has a sustainable uh, function, sustainable roles in architecture. And that one is the, uh, 
project by Chinese architect, Philip Yuan, actually. Do you know this building? <coughs> yeah, he's very, uh, I don't think he's very famous in China, but he's very uh, uh, sensational in other America and Europe. Because he, this is all parametrically uh, uh, fabricate the bricks. But he stacked these bricks by uh, robotic arms. So very art, uh, uh, so you know, by using hands, it, it's not possible. It's too complicated to make the, this kind of geometry. So yeah, he's in Shanghai. He's a professor in Tongji University. I know this guy, but he's uh, he's one of the famous young architects in China. I think. But you know, when I look at this kind of building, I uh, I always look back the Korean architecture. Now we are you know the, using the bricks, using the com concrete the blocks and bricks, and uh, the you know that is very popular in Korea. But uh, it's very same as the way of thousand years ago, I mean, so it's, it makes me very frustrated. If you go to the Pangyo area, I mean, many buildings, uh, they use the bricks, but it's not very special, not very uh, innovative. Uh, it's very stylish. I mean, the using brick is kind of trend in Korea, but uh, the way of using that is, is not changed at all. But I, even in China, uh, they they do these kind of things. So we we are very behind actually. Uh, amazingly behind, I think. I don't know why this one is here. <coughs> you know, I don't like the personal. I don't like this kind of uh, crazy patterns, but uh, it's. It's so surprising. Yeah. Parametric tools. <laughs> and not in architecture, but also urban design. So the Patrick, he, uh, he used the, uh, the quote of uh, Le Corbusier. So Le Corbusier said the man works in straight line because he has a goal and knows where he is going. He has made up his mind to reach some particular place and he's goes straight. So straight line is the right angle is the, uh, is the way of a new urbanism and new architecture. That's the claiming of Grovizier. But he said, uh, sometimes, you know, we wanna walk on the curved line. We wanna walk on the zigzag line, not in straight line. So, but uh, you know, the before the using the computer, so making curve, making zigzag is is random, right? Arbitrary. You can you cannot find any logic to uh, to make the make that. Uh, but uh, you know, using computer, you can find the logic of curve line or you know some kind of uh, 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 not by straight line you can find the logic. I mean, this is the research of Priyoro. You know Priyoro, right? Priyoro is architects using the membrane uh, structure. <coughs> this is the result of very mass mathematical thinking, and I think he used the computer. So this is the point. So he uh, tried to find a way uh, uh, to connect all the point by uh, the minimal, uh, the minimal, uh, how to say, the minimal lines. Do you understand? There, there is uh, so many ways to connect, connect all this point by using the lines. But so he said that this is the minimal, you know, the, the shortest lines to connect all of this one. So, I mean, he said, Prioro said, uh, maybe we can use this logic to urban design too. Uh, because it's, uh, maybe it can save the money of uh, construction of a road too. So this is the logic of uh, kind of random, logic of arbitrariness. <coughs> so, I mean, the one of example, one of project of Sahadid architect 
architects, uh, they did in 2000, early 2000s, um, they used a similar uh, idea. So this is uh, probably existing, I mean this is the a site is located in Turkey, uh, it's an old city and they, uh, they won the competition of master planning of this area. So this one is probably, you know, connecting, you know, all the existing laws, the way of, you know, uh, the, var the variable way of connecting this older road. If, if the Kurovize, you know, if the Kurovize is commissioned this, uh, the project, probably he make the grid, right? Ignoring all the, you know, existing context, existing texture. But uh, he said that he, uh, kind of Zaha, uh, they you know, kind of respect the uh, existing context. Also, they also have uh, eager to make the interesting forms too, at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure that this can be the answer, but uh, anyway, it has a rosy. It's not randomly generated. So that's the point. It's not random. It's not randomness. It has a uh, rosy too, and also, Locating buildings in each block has the logic too. I mean, they, uh, they use the, I'm not sure that is Katia or Maya, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, there's parameters. If you, I mean, it's parameters about regulation or heights or FAR or something, uh, this kind of thing. And then you know, automatically uh, the computer generates the, the form of the building too. <coughs> so this is the master plan, final master plan. It's different from here. I mean, it's the conceptual uh, plans. This is, it has more, uh, it became the more realistic. But uh, if you look at the rendering, I mean, this uh, interesting, uh, but I don't think I can live there, but anyway. But it, it looks great in the plan, but if you look at the 3D model, I mean, it's total disaster. Uh, yeah, and anyway, I mean, there is a video about this project. Let me show you. <coughs> it, it doesn't have any music. making lot laws first. This is the way of uh, Lukrovize and then they manipulate the uh, you know, Cartesian grid. <laughs> yeah, it's all parametric. And they use the, uh, the programs. <coughs> so actually program design all the things and then architects uh, you are kind of God. You have to choose what is the best. Made some negotiation to make the you know, courtyard or something. And you just start. <laughs> I don't know. This is, it looks ugly and it looks very expensive. I don't think it's gonna be realized, it's impossible. Not necessary at the same time. And then, and then, you know, Patrick, uh, he, he, he teaches the same uh, the methodology for his student. This is the, uh, the Mumbai, the Mumbai, Mumbai is the city in the biggest city in India. It's a Mumbai extension by uh, Patrick's Students is more even radical. Uh, it looks interesting, but uh, anyway, th this project also has a video. I mean, it's very long, so 
let me just let's just see very quickly just see the important part so we are going to do the Belgian buttons wahrscheinlich glass button und er nutzt diesen äh, physikalischen Effekt dieser Materialien, um es eigentlich nicht zu generieren, auf den zusammendrückenden Traube. Tour, das heißt, Tierhelden, die Tür, so das Frau ist, äh, die Frau ist, die vorher erwähnt, diese Trampelfarbe, um, ungeplante Siedlungen, um, die um, ein asteroidisches Dorf so so in Südamerika oder im Prinzip um, sehr bereits Teile der urbanen Siedlungen in Marokko. Actually, grid is um, system of the grid in city urban design is and it comes in the nature in this rein form, that is in the bauer structure, or it can also be generated by the same as the research of a fire. And that it has a kind of a mathematical logic, parametric logic too. Es wird davon ausgegangen, dass der Vergleich bereits jetzt so existiert, die Schnabe in der Aufgabe haben, so wie ein weiterer Fonds gleichzeitig hier würde man das sehen, dass äh, diese Linien, dieser Punktmaßstab, man könnte es beschreiben mit einem Fließen über das, dieses neue Generierungsleiterin von Commercials. Ein Beispiel lasst uns die Nachzüge auf und oben jetzt noch dazu. I mean, it has also history, you know, the or organic, uh, organic urban design, uh, organic form of urban design also has a history. The not, you know, mid Mid-Eastern cities has organic form. <laughs> Also Ausgang von den Kernzonen mit einer sehr kleinen, teiligen Wegeführung, welches sich zu diesem Land bewandelt, der Innensiedlungen, der Beziehung von Arten, die mit einem sehr dichten Bild. Ebenso auf der anderen Seite im Bereich zu den Mitteln. Die kennen yes. die Nachbarschaftszahlen. <웃음> Economic Hangout ist Eco, mit dem Hangout ist Eco, mit dem 요즘은 그 서스테너, 그러니까 도시의 어떤 열, 열이나 뭐 바람, 이렇게 공기 순환이나 이런 것들도 다 프로그램이 있어서 플러그인이 다 있을 거예요. 그래서 그런 것들 고려해가지고 이렇게 해야 공기가 순환이 잘 되고 또 열섬 현상이라고요. 뭐 그런 것들이 좀 적고 그런 것도 있고 뭐 그다음 FAR 같은 경우에는 마스터 플랜에서 뭐 FAR이 주어질 경우도 있지만 주어지지 않을 경우에는 그 시에서 몇몇 명 정도 살게 해줬으면 좋겠다 이런 또 파라메터가 있으니까 그런 거 넣어가지고 이제 어떻게 분배를 어떻게 할 것인가 이런 것도 하는 거죠. The, this is too uh, form oriented uh, design. But, uh, actually GIS is the same as that. It's a similar way of uh, so we can use that idea, uh, but not not in terms of form, but in terms of logic of uh, uh, the design generations. So, <coughs> yeah, it's getting crazier. So is, this is our student work by Zaha and Patrick Schumacher. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but he used the same way for the new project. Uh, it's the Arab Emirate, UAE. I mean, they have money, I think they can build, I guess. The project in Saudi Arabia is more complicated. But they so all kind of, I mean, these patterns, can you see the patterns? I mean, this pattern is parametric. This form is the 
you can uh, you don't need to have a uh, parametric tools to generate these forms, but uh, the way of construction you have to have uh, to penalize the, this surface. You have to use a kind of uh, the, uh, the way of digitalization. The same as same way as the DDP they use, and this kind of thing was parametric. I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, what is that uh, brutalism architecture? If you look at the brutalism architecture, it's, I think the brutalism, to me, this is my own uh, idea. <coughs> uh, brutalism architecture is generated by modern architecture, but uh, it's also very avant-garde architecture. I mean, the brutalism architecture, architects uh, they uh, they try to make some kind of different things, and if you look at the geometric, um, uh, sim uh, also you know the what is this, uh, communism architecture, to try to make the symbolic <laughs> figure, uh, they use the very geometric you know the form. But uh, I think that, that this kind of thing is kind of a you know. Uh, that has an interconnection between this kind of thing and you know, that kind of symbolic figure. This is Central Bank in Iraq, but uh, I don't think they can build. It, it looks very expensive building, but uh, Iraq, they don't have money. And listen to me, this project. <coughs> I mean, that that is the, it looks the, uh, designed by parametric tools, but actually if you look at the plans, Then I just want to show the what I'm doing right now uh, because it has it also has the idea of parametric things too. Uh, as I told you before, I always um, very uh, for some reason I like this bracketing system without any reason. I so you know someday I thought you know. Probably someday I am gonna analyze the system and then reinvent that. So now uh, the last year I, I got a fund uh, from government. I got some money uh, for this research. Uh, it's not very clear. But let me just uh, explain. So this is a traditional uh, bracketing system. I uh, simplified this one by this process that has kind of logic, you know, how to uh, reinterpret this one. You don't have to understand this one. Yeah. This is kind of traditional way of, uh, you know, the joint is simplified. Uh, but to make, try, I mean, the making, for making the more variation, I, I kind of invented a V-shaped joint. So by that sh joint, you know, the form can be, you know, changed, manipulate uh, different way for geometry. And uh, it's the same as uh, I showed, uh, image I showed before, it's a CNC uh, preparation of a CNC cut. It's, it's all the pieces of the elements. <coughs> it's construction. This is the uh, 3.4 meters. The length is, uh, the width is more than five or six meters. I guess. 